Now what I want to show you here is, since we made our relief cut, you can now see right here that the collar that your lug is resting on is actually shorter than the width of the lug. You can see right here, this is shorter than the overall width of the lug, which means when you put your barrel on, it will snug up against the lug, which is the way you want it to, and not up against that shoulder that we have underneath there. But the lug will maintain its integrity and stay nice and straight. Also, because I'm using a rather wide radius cutting tool, this is 11 and a half degrees, it gives you a very nice finish, but it does not leave a perfectly right angle corner. You must take your cutter and go down along the shoulder and put the radius down below this locking ring. And this way, your locking ring will fit snugly up against the, the shoulder without hitting that radius. Now the next step, before you get ready to thread, you have to cut a slight taper here on the end of your tenon because when your threading tool comes in to start threading, you don't want it to hit up against a straight 90 degree wall. You'd like it to hit into a little taper. So I'm now going to start blade and using your cross feed and your cross slide at the same time, we're going to move these dials together and you'll see how it comes out. It's almost like using an Etch-a-Sketch for you older shooters out there. You go in and move it at the same time and you're creating a little slope. This can also be accomplished by turning one of your inserts, one of your threaded inserts, at a 45 degree angle if this was in a tool holder right now, you could take this and it could come in at a 45 degree angle and you could actually create the exact same angle. Now we're going to get set up for threading. I'm going to thread the tenon for 16 threads per inch, which is a standard Remington thread. I've already taken the liberty of setting up the threading tool and I'm using the Arthur Warner High Speed Steel positive rate insert to thread it gives us a nice fine cut and it's extremely sharp. I'm going to start this up and then I'm going to continue threading off video because if you don't know how to thread at this point you're going to have to learn and this video is not about threading it's about chambering. Now the first pass we're going to make is only about four thousandths and the reason we only take a four thousandths cut is because I want to scribe the tenon and then I'm going to check the thread pattern with a thread pitch gauge to make sure that indeed we are threading 16 threads per inch. Now in the event that you have set up your machine incorrectly and you find out that you haven't threaded 16 threads per inch, then you can turn around and actually set your machine up properly for 16 threads per inch and you can run right over top of these scribe marks and you'll never see them. But you should verify and we are verifying at this point that yes indeed these little points are sitting in the valleys of the score marks from the threading. So we verified that this is 16 threads per inch. Now we will continue with the threading and I'll be back as soon as the threading is almost done. We've now finished our 16 threads per inch and you can see the thread cutting tool, the insert, is right in the center of the relief cut that we made and it has just barely scratched the bottom of that relief cut and it hasn't interfered with the shoulder on the flat area that we left for the recoil lug. I'm now going to back out the threading tool we're going to fit the recoil lug on. You can see it's loose here, but once it gets on here, it's nice and snug. We're going to start up the lathe, and we're going to put a little anti-seize on the threads, because the last thing you ever want to do is thread on a stainless steel barrel that is naked without any kind of anti-seize, and only put a little bit of it on this end. 
Do not cover the whole thing and do not use an excessive amount. If you use an excessive amount, it will be pushed, it will travel through the thread and be pushed up against the recoil lug and we don't want that. We're now going to fit the action on. I'm going to have my helper do this. My helper today in the lathe cave is Mr. John Millington, bench rest shooter from Illinois. John's going to check the tang now and he's going to wiggle it to see if there's any play. And there's a very minimal amount of play. And with all Remington actions, as it gets down to the bottom of the threads, they tend to get a little tighter. But it's nice and snug. There's no wobble whatsoever and it's going to lock right up against the recoil lug. And John, is that recoil lug uh, snug there? Snug. Snug. It's not going to move. Alright, our next step will be cutting the recess for the bolt nose and we'll be back with that in a few minutes. The next process in chambering the Remington action is the bolt nose recess. Now for most standard Remington actions it's uh, between 145 and 150 in depth and it's 708 thousandths across in this particular model Remington action. Now this is the bolt nose and it fits in like so. The dimension on this is 700 thousandths from one side to the other and this dimension is going to be 708 thousandths so it has 4 thousandths clearance all the way around. Now there are two ways to actually cut this. One is you can get a really nice reamer from Dave Kiff at Pacific Tool and Gauge this is exactly 708 thousandths wide and the only dimension you have to worry about is your depth of cut. Now this one as you can see has already been chambered so the hole is large but normally you would have uh, whatever bushing that you were going to use for chambering you would put it on the end of this reamer and then you would fit it in like so and then you'd feed it in the 150 or whatever thousandths you need to, to put it in either 145 or 150. On the barrel that we're doing right now, the measurement is 144, 144,000, so it's 0 0.144. Now the other way to cut this recess without using a specialized reamer like this is you can single point it. And today we're going to be using the Arthur R. Warner profiling tool with a 35 degree diamond insert. This is a very sharp high-speed steel tool uh, insert and um, you can get it from the Arthur R. Warner Company in Latrobe, PA. It's got a nice reach on it. It's fully supported underneath so that uh, you don't have to worry about it flexing. Now the way you line this tool up with your, with your bore so that you get a nice straight wall cut is to take a small square, set it up along the face of the tenon and then line your tool up so that it's perfectly in line. As you can see here, this one's already been lined up and it's perfectly in line. This will allow us to cut from inside out and will be coming out until we have a hole that is 708 thousandths wide. And our particular measurement is going to be 144 thousandths deep. Okay, we're now single pointing with the Arthur R. Warner Tool Companies. 35 degree profiling tool. I'm going to add a little bit of oil and I'm using the DRO to dictate when I stop this and it stops at exactly 708 thousandths. But this profiling tool makes an absolutely perfect tool for single pointing the recess on this Remington action. See the nice tight curl coming off? It takes a really nice uh, cut.
We're now close to the end of our recess cut for our bolt nose. And as you can see, I've got the Viper's Venom in there, and we're at 144 thousandths exactly, which is what our mathematical specifications called for for this particular action. And I'll verify that by looking up at the Grizzly Industrial Digital Readout, which shows us at 144. This particular number down here, when this number gets to zero, then I have attained the 708, because I'm working from the inside out. A digital readout is really helpful. If you don't have it, then you're going to have to measure as you go along. But if you have the digital readout, you'll be able to set this up and it uh, becomes a no-brainer. Single pointing is something that anybody can do. It's just time consuming and you have to be careful. It's not as easy as using the reamer from, the, from uh, Dave Kiff at Pacific Tool. I would suggest for any homeowner or hobbyist that wants to do his own gun barrels, to get that reamer from Dave Kiff. Just tell him um, what action you're going to be doing it for and it, it always uh, it's always helpful to have the right tools. We're now going to make our last cut. Let's see if I can get the camera a little closer here. Now I'm going to be stopping this short of my zero mark on the DRO so that I can look up and see the DRO. I'm using special video glasses right now to do this. I'm only taking off four thousandths at this point. I'm now going to take my eyes off of this and go back to the DRO. When that number hits zero, we have attained 708 thousandths. As you can see, we've got a 7, 7, 708 thousandths diameter cut and 144 thousandths deep exactly. This barrel is now ready for actually reaming. Now when you're done, even though you've got a digital readout, make certain that you check your numbers Physically, we're looking for 144. Let me get this in here. There we are, 144 in depth. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. I'll rotate this a little bit. Now the 144 in depth, as you remember, will give you bolt nose clearance. The measurement we took earlier from the front of the bolt lug to the front of the nose ring was 134. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And therefore, in order to have 10 thousandths clearance, you make the depth of cut here 10 thousandths more. So it comes out to 144. Now we're ready for chamber. Well, we're all set up to chamber now. We're using a reamer from Pacific Tool, Dave Kiff at uh, PT&G, and we're using the Lambert Kiff reamer micrometer. I've already gone over this in another video, and if you'd like to see it, you can go on YouTube and look in my folder. Or you can order this uh, video that I've made on this reamer micrometer. It's only five bucks. The reamer micrometer has an absolute stop on it. 
when this particular collar, this stop collar, reaches the end of the tenon, it automatically stops the reamer from going any further. Now, of course, we're going to be doing this at 25 thousandths at a clip instead of running straight in because the flutes will handle easily 25 thousandths of chips without uh, binding up and scratching your chamber. This is very important. If you don't have a power flush system, then this is what you have to do. It's 25 thousandths at a time. Now, when you set up your Lambert Kiff reamer micrometer, you take your go gauge, which is an absolute... Uh, stop for your bolt when you're chambering your gun and you set it up so that the reamer is short of the go gauge in other words this is where the chamber will actually be and this is where we have the go gauge lined up which means we can ream worry free as far as depth measurement until we hit this stop and we're going to be about 20 to 30 thousand short and then we can take measurements and then move our reamer micrometer in as we go the way you move the reamer micrometer again this was covered in the other video on reamer micrometers you loosen up the locking collar and then you can dial in one thousandths at a time or a half thousandths at a time whatever uh, measurement you need and then lock your locking collar in place again and then continue reaming. Now we're going to start. We're going to apply some Viper's Venom chambering oil. It's very thick, high sulfur content. And you see how it stays right on the reamer. Put a little bit into the bore. This lubricates the bushing. Move your bushing into the hole, guide it in. And once it's guided in in place, I want you to put a little bit of Viper's Venom on the Manson floating reamer holder. Floating reamer holder will only float if it has a barrier of oil between the two metal surfaces. I'm going to take this out and show you again. This particular head floats. It'll float in all directions. And the reason it, you want it to float is so that the pilot, once that's in the bore, it will guide the reamer in and this will adjust accordingly and this will stay in position because the reamer the uh, pilot has guided the reamer in in this particular application we are using a finish reamer from start to finish i can't see cutting a reamer a hole twice by using a roughing reamer and a finish reamer the reamers are about 149 dollars a piece and they're good for 40 to 50 barrels so for the home gunsmith, one reamer is all you need. You know. Now in this particular method, we are using a finished reamer from start to finish. Each reamer has a pilot on the end of it. The pilot doesn't do any good if you drill a hole out with a drill, an oversized drill, which is about 15 thousandths less than the reamer and then start reaming. The pilot has no function until it can engage in the bore again. So when I chamber, I chamber with the finish reamer from start to finish. They're about $149 each. You can do 40 to 50 barrels with it if you're careful. And if you're the home gunsmith or hobbyist, you should have your own reamer and you're the only one that uses it and therefore you can use a finish reamer from start to finish. And during the reaming process, once we get to the shoulder, we only take 25 thousandths at a cut. Then we'll pull the reamer out, clean it off, blow the barrel out, and we'll proceed again and do that procedure over and over again until we have achieved the depth that we want. We're going to be turning this at 70 RPMs. We're going to apply the Viper's Venom onto the reamer. You can see it stays right on the reamer. And then you take your reamer in nice and slow. It's 
tapered at the front so that you have a nice lead in. And you'll begin to see the chips coming out. And again, you can ream straight in at a nice constant feed rate until you get just, just past the shoulder. Because right now we're just opening up the hole in preparation for the actual body of the reamer to start reaming. That's important, just like when you're drilling a hole, that you keep a nice constant feed. Otherwise, you can snap your reamer off. See the chips flowing down the reamer right now? Now the shoulder has engaged and what we're going to do is you're going to back your reamer off just a little bit and shut the lathe off. You do not want to drag all these chips back through a spinning chamber. Back your reamer out. Take your air hose. And a rag. Hold it in front. Throw your chips away so that you don't get them in your eyes. You pull the reamer back away and blow the chips out of the barrel. We're now ready to start reaming again. Bring your reamer up in place. Put a little bit of oil inside. Lubricate your reamer again. This time you're going to feed your reamer in with the tailstock without it being turned on and you'll feel the pilot engage and the reamer line up by itself. You run it in slowly until it stops. Then you go back to your tailstock Set your tail stock at zero, always pushing the dial away from you to keep tension on the front of the reamer. You're going to back it off 10 or 20 thousandths. This way the reamer is not engaged with the chamber at this point. You're going to start up your lathe. You're going to hold the reamer, micro the reamer body right here so that you can feel it engage. You're going to come back to your tailstock, move your tailstock forward using your dial until you get back to zero. Now you know at zero you're going to re-engage the chamber and you're going to nice and steadily ream 25 thousandths. When you hit the 25 thousandths mark, back off the reamer and shut off the lathe. You do not want the lathe spinning full of chips. Back your reamer out. Take your rag so that you don't blow any chips in your face. that happen again during a video. I'm going to re-blow your chamber out. Bring your reamer back up in place. Lock your tailstock. 
using the Viper's Venom, you want to coat the reamer again. Squirt a little bit in the bore. Again, holding on to the reamer body so that you guide it into the center. The pilot now has taken over. It is guiding the reamer in. And the self-aligning floating reamer holder has the reamer nice and straight. Run your reamer in until you hit, nice and easy. Go back to your tailstock. Set your dial at zero. Always moving it away from you and keeping tension on the reamer. Back it off 20 thousandths. Start your lathe up. Hold on to the reamer holder so you can feel it when it engages. Bring your tail stock forward until you get to the zero mark and you know you're engaged. And you're going to ream into a depth of 25 thousandths. At 25 thousandths, back off the dial, which brings the reamer out of the cutting sequence. It takes the pressure off of it and you shut your lathe off at the same time. And you can see how many chips you get with a 25 thousandths cut. This way the chips can handle, the uh, flutes can actually handle the amount of chips that you're pulling out. Blow your barrel off, your, uh, blow your chamber out, blow your reamer off, Take your reamer back up, lock your tailstock in place, put some oil inside the chamber, coat the reamer with the Viper's Venom. Slowly run your reamer in until it stops. Take your tailstock dial. Run it to zero. Back it off 20 thousandths. Start your lathe up. Holding on to your floating reamer holder. Turn your dial so you get to zero and that's where it will engage again. And keeping a nice steady pressure, you're going to ream 25 thousandths. Back the reamer off, shut off your lathe. You're going to repeat this procedure until the stop collar on the Lamarckib reamer micrometer hits and engages the back of the tenon. Now I'm going to continue most of this off camera and then we'll come back towards the end. Now ream the chamber as far as the Lambert Kiff reamer micrometer has allowed us to ream. We're now going to assemble the action onto the barrel and we're going to measure how much more we have to ream. Make sure you install your lug. Don't put the action on all the way. You want to put your go gauge in and you want to put your bolt in. And again, the bolt does not have the fire control mechanism in it. This way we have a nice easy feel. Now with the bolt closed and the go gauge in the action, turn it slowly until it stops moving. Now it has stopped. Now we have a gap in between the shoulder and the lug. And we're going to measure that with our feeler gauges. We're going to start out with 25 thousandths. And you can see 25 thousandths fits in there very easily. So we'll add 15 thousandths to that. And that still fits in there easily. We'll add another 25 to that. Sorry, read them wrong. 
We tried 25. We're going to add three thousandths now. You see, 28 thousandths is still plenty. We'll add another four thousandths. Still have plenty of room. We'll add another five thousandths to that. Still plenty of room. Add another six to that. And we're right there. That's a nice feel. So we know that we have 25, and, 20, and 3 is 28, and 4 is 32, and 5 is 37, and 6 is 43. We know we're 43 thousandths away from touching. Now what we're going to do is we'll take the action off, and we will turn around here, and we know we have 43 thousandths to dial in, so we're going to dial half of that in, or 20 thousandths. We'll dial in 20 thousandths. Now, using the Lambert Kiff Reamer micrometer, you can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's 20 thousandths that we've dialed in. And now we can ream worry-free for 20 thousandths more, which is cutting half of the distance, or a little less than half, of what we have to do to finish reaming our chamber. Now we're going to get set up for that. 20 thousandths deep cut with the reamer. And you'll see that the Lamarckiff reamer micrometer will butt right up against the end of the tenon. We're going to back it off and turn the laid off at the exact same time. And now we're going to follow our cleaning procedure. We'll clean it up really good. We'll put the action back on and take another measurement. We've now taken our 20 thousandths cut and we're going to reassemble everything and we're going to try the action again. Now make sure when you do this, each time you do it, you swab out the chamber so that there's no oil in there. You don't want any kind of a hydraulic action against your uh, go gauge, and you don't want any hydraulic action between these surfaces when it finally does touch. All right, your action's on most of the way. Insert your go gauge. Install your bolt. Close the handle and very gently move it in until it doesn't go any further. That's where it stops. You see we have a, still have a little bit of play. Now we take our feeler gauges once again. We'll try 24 thousandths. 24 thousandths fits. 25 thousandths just fits. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of the 25 thousandths this time. We'll take, uh, Maverick, we'll take 15 thousandths this time. So we'll disassemble the action and we'll set up the reamer micrometer for another 15 thousandths cut. Loosen the locking collar and dial in 15 thousandths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We now have 15 thousandths on here, and the reamer micrometer will not allow the reamer to take any more than 15 thousandths. And we'll be right back. Now we're moving our reamer in until we feel the touch. And it'll be 15 thousandths off. And as you can see, there is a small gap there. We're resetting our tailstock dial to zero. We'll back it off 20 thousandths. Then we'll start up our lathe. We'll bring the dial indicator back to zero, and that's where it should engage. And we'll take it in 15,000 until it hits the locking collar. As 
soon as it touches the locking collar, we'll back off the reamer. And now we've taken a 15,000th cut. We will now clean out the chamber and we will take another measurement. Taking off an additional 15,000th, so we're now going to put the lug back on. We're going to reinstall the action again. this point, put the go gauge in, put your bolt back in, close the action, and move it forward until it stops. You'll feel it stop against the go gauge. Our ring is still a little loose. Now we're going to use the feeler gauges again. This time, of course, nothing as big as 23 or 24 thousandths will fit. So let's try nine thousandths. Ooh, nine thousandths is almost there. Let's try ten thousandths. Ten thousandths feels like a perfect fit. So on this particular pass, we're going to take eight thousandths off. I want to be a couple of thousandths short. You want to creep up on this. This is the, this is the final journey. And uh, you don't want to over-tighten these as you're working, and you want to make sure that you don't cut too deep. Otherwise, you've got to work on the shoulder. So now we're going to tile in 8 thousandths in the Lambert Kifrima micrometer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to take the action off and get set up for reaming the next uh, pass. Our 8,000th cut, we've reinstalled the locking ring, the recoil ring. We're inserting the go gauge. Now we insert the bolt and close it, and you'll feel it actually lock on the go gauge. And now we're going to close the bolt until we feel it stop. And there it stopped. Now we don't want to force this in. Now right now we've got a perfect fit. According to the go gauge and our numbers, an absolutely perfect fit. As a conclusion to this video, I'd like to thank a few of the people that helped make it. First of all, Mr. Eric Wheeldryer of the Ontario Gun Store in Kalamazoo, Michigan. He uh, supplied the action for us. Mr. Dave Kiff, who produces some of the finest uh, tooling that can be found. He supplied the Lambert Kiff Reamer micrometer and all the tooling for chambering. Mr. Mark Diaguano from the Research and Development Department at Brownells, who graciously supplied us with the schematic of exactly uh, how to measure and, and the formulas needed for the chambering. And last but not least, a little bit of proof to show that the chambering method actually does work. And now, from deep inside the Lathe Cave, somewhere in southwest Michigan, this has been the Viper.